Finland. All right. We got some Darude. Yeah. So, yeah. Obviously, this is a person I re recognize the name of. This is the first artist I recognized so far out of the ones we've um, analyzed. Um, so I sort of had some expectations going into this song, I guess, because I have heard at least one other song slash Sandstorm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but it didn't give me those vibes at all. So that was interesting. So that's the first, you know, initial reaction. Um, now let's break down the song. Another male singer. We only got one language and it is English. Our vocal range is B3 to F5. So that is one and a half octaves. So not too bad. Um, and we're in a B minor key. 4-4 four, four is our tempo. And we're at 126 beats per minute. So that's, you know, just about an average pop song. Just a little bit over. So, you know, close enough, right? <laughs> We've only got four chords. And the last two come in later, like right at the end. Like it changes the way in which the um, chorus is played. The chord structures change. But for the rest of it, we've only got a B minor chord and an A chord, a major chord, which is chord one and seven um, going out throughout the whole thing. So I complained in one of the previous videos about how you can really stuff up two chords and make it super boring. So, you know, there is that risk, but they managed to avoid it, I think. Like, it wasn't, like, super over the top, but compared to Slovenia, this was a work of art. <laughs> um... And that's maybe that's just because of the instrumentation or personal or personal preference. But you've got like different inversions of the chords. So instead of playing like your traditional one, two, three chord, you're going up and then playing the one like the next lot. That was a terrible illustration on my hand. But I, you're playing the same notes just in a different order, basically. And so it, it creates interest. It makes it a bit more um, interesting. So your main sort of verse and chorus is basically a B minor and A an inverted A, and then back to B minor, and then repeat for, for like the entire song. But because of the inversion, it, it works pretty well. So at the end, it was also a uh, chord six and three, G and D. Uh, and that, I don't know, I think that gave it a much more um, positive vibe towards the end because we're in a minor key, but we've got three major chords being used plus one minor chord. And because throughout the rest of the song, you've got the two chords, which is one minor and one major chord, uh, working together, it's got a much more minor vibe, but at the end you've kind of got that sort of major sort of shift because you've got those major chords in the last chorus right at the end. Um, so in terms of instruments, we have the vocals. Now, usually I don't talk too much about the vocals, but I had made a note on this song. This is the only song where I've actively noticed that the vocals have been doubled which means um you sing it once and then you record it and sing it again the exact same so you've got no change in melody but you can sort of hear two voices of the same voice just um, like our and that's like, sorry just like our just, jingle. yeah that's that's triple though <laughs> but um that, what that does is it sort of gives it a much more um reverbed effect so it, when you're in a studio it's your voice is usually pretty isolated um because you're trying to cut out any excess noise and so you kind of lose that echo or that reverb that you get when you're talking to people naturally um you've got plenty of reverb in this video because i'm not soundproofing my room at all when i record this and i'm sure mitch isn't either <laughs> and so you can hear that like natural delay that natural echo that occurs when you're talking um and so to sort of like fix that up a lot of songs most songs will have some sort of doubling happening but most of them are pretty subtle about it they might take the same recording and then shift it slightly a few milliseconds so that you've got just a slight delay but enough that it sounds a bit more natural when you're listening to it whereas in this song there was one line in particular um is it in my head where you could really tell that there's a second recording of this um coming out is it in my head? that you can hear that. Then we've got some piano, we've got some synths, we have some 
electric drums, and then we have like this bassy synth sound. It could be a bass guitar, but it sounds like really deep notes, so maybe it's a synth bass. It sounds good though. Um, and it works really well for that. So it's a very uh, pop, poppy uh, electronic song. And so having a lot of synth isn't surprising because you've kind of got that like um, ability to play around with how they hit, how like how hardly, how, like how hard they come to attack. Uh, so if it comes in and it's like really loud, that's a high attack at start and how quickly it fades out. Like you've got a lot more room to play with that so that you can get that really punchy beat sound, which is common in electronic music. Um, in terms of structure, we have uh, an intro for two. Uh, verse one for eight bars, pre-chorus for eight bars, and then a chorus for 24 bars, which is made up of three parts. And the first part was um, the is it in my head, then it's the look away, and then it was a crossover of both in the third one. So that's eight, eight, and eight. Um, and that made up the chorus. But they're all fairly similar. It's the same vibe. It's a very similar melodic uh, sort of narrative, I guess, happening there. And so I consider that whole thing the chorus. Then we've got a break for two bars. And by break, I mean they just kind of let the sounds sort of fade for two bars. They don't do anything with it. And then it comes back in with verse two. Um, for eight bars, we have another pre-chorus for eight bars. And then our chorus at the end has 32 bars with four parts, which is the is it in my head, the look away, the is it in my head again, and then the both afterwards. So it's just a little bit longer. You've got a bit more happening with the is it in my head question. Uh, before it goes into your sort of final part. Um, so that's our structure. How did you find the structure? You, you were satisfied at the end? I think it was very repetitive. Um, like, it was a really fun song. I was very vibing it. Um, and I think the structure was the last thing I analysed on this song, and I'm kind of glad because by the end of it, I'm just like, wait, really? It's this same bit, still a chorus, and I, it was just like, well, when's it moving on? What's, what's next um, for the chorus? And then it was like, oh, well, it's pretty similar again. I don't know. So maybe maybe I just thought it was like two halves. The song was essentially two halves, and it kind of repeated. Um, and so it was, it was a bit boring. I thought that was a, it wasn't the best um, seller of this mm. country, I guess, or, or at all. <laughs> Um, and then I had critiques in the chorus, um, on the lyrics. So, um, I, I, I'll talk about what the video, I thought the video was about first, and then I'll go into my critiques because they sort of lead into each other. Mm. Um, but yeah, so let's look at the video. Um, we get the picture of this first guy. Um, I assume maybe is, I don't, like, I don't know what Drood looks like. Maybe it's Drood, maybe it's Sebastian. I don't know. But it looks like he tries to open his eyes and fails. There's something you should know. And I'm like, I don't know, I shouldn't be judging, but that's how I'm feeling. I feel like you're trying to look at me and just squinting and it just didn't work. And then the next guy's got his eyes like wide open and it's like, well, that's a contrast. That's not like at all the same thing. And there's a couple of curls as well who had their eyes squinty and I'm like, are they making you look into the light? I think they're being really mean if that's the case because these guys obviously aren't. They've got their eyes heaps far open. Um, so, yeah, um, it was a bit weird to have the cutting between people, but I think it also worked. It kind of had this narrative of multiple people were having this same narrative. And I assume that it was a message of the song about, like, global warming because that's the sort of background back, backdrops you had in the video. You had lots of nature shots. You had, like, storms and you had dust storms as well as rainstorms <laughs> and you had some, some lots of natural stuff. And so I'm assuming that the song's message is about global warming. But as I said earlier, I have issues with the lyrics, particularly in the chorus when it's the look away section because the first thing it says is, we look away. AKA we're ignoring it. But then it repeats look away and only look away from that sentence. And so instead of it being a, we're doing this, we're ignoring it, it becomes a, let's ignore it. It's more like an instruction because it's like, we look away, look away, look away, look away, stop looking, like get out. Like, what are you still looking for? It's like, it's, you're trying to promote this thing that we're all um, choosing to ignore it and we shouldn't be. 
but it's turning into more of an instruction of maybe we should just ignore it because it ain't getting any better. And I don't think that's what they're going for. But that's sort of what I came away with. I'm just like, I, yeah, why? You, you could have done so much better. You think it's reverse psychology or something? No. <laughs> like, maybe, but, like, I don't think it is. I just think it was, oh, no, it sounds catchy if we repeat look away, so we're only going to repeat look away. Like, this, um, is our moment. Oh, oh, this is our um, moment to write a line of, like, you know, how to change the world, and they're like, uh, no, nah, we just had to look, look away. From like, it's very valid to point out that we aren't really looking at the problem because, as a world, we're not. But to say, we look away, look away, look away. Look away, look away, look away. What do like, you think of the music video, how they're all... Well, they looked away. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, because the chorus is so long, like, is it in my head? Like, I assume is that global warming, is it just, like, something in my head? The answer's no. You know, science to back that up, look it up. Um, and then it's like, we just ignore it, we look away. I'm like, well... Mm. I, I, you're not selling it very well for me. Like your message has got to be strong, and you're just not doing that. So sometimes um, entries in Eurovision get criticised for trying to change the world, but they're not really specific. Do you think this would be an instance in then in that? Yes. Yeah. They don't yeah. want to be offensive in any way, but they kind of want to have some general message. I think so. Um, like I, I think it's a really good message, and we shouldn't stop writing songs with messages and i think global warming is a great song to have a great message to have in your song but you gotta do it better you don't have to be super specific but you gotta be a bit more than that or at least you gotta follow the line that you're going with with like if you're talking about ignoring it don't instruct people to then continue to ignore it talk about how we can then not ignore it perhaps so, yeah, like it was an all right song, but in terms of structure, very repetitive. In terms of lyrics, a little bit flawed in my opinion. And like the video was really cool though. I, I really did enjoy the visuals of the video. Um, they were interesting and they were they're like, it wasn't too much except for the squinty eyes. The squinty eyes were a bit weird. Like otherwise it was a pretty good video. <laughs> this was an interesting national selection in that they already had Darude and the singer. Um, chosen and okay. so every other they had like songs that were all written and performed by them and so the public voted for which song they liked best so this is the one that won for the Finnish so public. basically they just have an ongoing contract and they're like yeah we'll write five songs why not you pay us we'll, we'll do as many songs written as you want and the country can vote <laughs> yeah pretty much so now they've got a whole set list for a tour <laughs> Pretty much. It's like, what's going on? We're going on a Eurovision tour. These are the songs we wrote for Eurovision. Here's only one of them made up, but, you know, we made, we wrote the songs. <laughs> I know. It's interesting, though. If there were five songs that people were voting on, what were the other, like, topics? Why is it that one win? Or was it just because of, like, the vibe? Was it more, like, electronic? And people were like, yeah, we want electronic music. Bring it on. We'll party at Eurovision. I must say I didn't watch that national selection because there were like five on the same morning. But I will I will check out the other songs. How dare you? <laughs> that is so unlike you, Mitch. I know. Okay. I think of you, it is all right. I'm not actually that bad. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much, Elise, for your review. Finland, Finland. I'm here with Stuart Wilders from ESC Fan TV. Go subscribe to ESC Fan TV after this video, and we'll talk about Darude, Finland. Did you watch UMK? I know we were watching like so many national selections that month, that night. Yeah, look, honestly, I caught up with the winner, um, and uh, I mean Darude. I mean, when when I heard Darude was going to perform for Finland, I knew he's, who knew Darude was. I mean, I I was uh, I was a I was a '90s kid, so you know I'm dancing away to Darude Sandstorm in the in the clubs. Uh, who am I kidding? I was an '80s 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 child, but I was dancing around the <laughs> '90s. I was I was DJing. We're still the there. Yeah, you know, I was DJing in the '90s, and Darude uh, Sandstorm was one of those songs which you just played because it was just it got everyone up dancing. Um, Sounds like it's almost like you know. Fast forward twenty years, it's the same type song, 
he hasn't really changed his style. It's it's Darude of old. It's what you'd have come to uh, to to sort of perceive Darude uh, as the songwriter, as the DJ, uh, doing and being. Uh, yeah, it, I'm th I have a concern that this won't work. You know, we saw with Poland last year um, that a dance song doesn't always mean it's going to work at Eurovision stage. In fact, I think back, I can't remember any sort of dance song ever working at Eurovision. This, I think, might go the same way. I'm not expecting Phil to qualify. Oh, okay. So you, will you be looking at him to look away? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's. I like it. it will, I'll play it a lot in the car on the way to work or when I'm sat, you know, waiting and doing something in Tel Aviv, I'll be playing it. But do I expect it to do well on stage in Tel Aviv? No, I don't expect it to qualify. I think it will, it will miss the mark. Could do really badly, actually. I always find it awkward with uh, producers and DJs performing because they're air guitaring at Eurovision, you know? Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, oh, like, there's well, nothing you're doing. The, the videos, uh, the, the performance is really good, actually, because it's kind of the roots in this box and it's spinning um, and uh, the, the singer's outside the box and, and it, it sort of works as a performance. Um, but then they had a really good performance for Poland last year and that didn't work, you know? So I, I don't know. I just, I just work off the basis of experience. I've never known a, a dance song working in that kind of environment before. And I'm, I'm not expecting, I hope Phil and prove me wrong because I like Phil and I want Phil and to do well, but I'm not sure this will work. Would you categorize Norway that time? Um, grab the moment as a similar kind of thing. It's not really dancey, I guess, but it had a kind of. I think, I think that's yeah, I can see where you're going with it. I think it's a slightly different genre. Um, I think there was a bit of a gimmick going on there as well. And he's a good singer. I think the song was miles better than Darude's uh, Darude's tenor. Um, yeah, what do you think of the actual singer they chose? Because they had a national selection and they had they the way that they did it for anyone that doesn't know is that they had a bunch of songs, but they already had the artist and the Darude and the singer. And um, what what do you think of him his skills as a singer? Yeah, he was a bit patchy in the national final, actually, from what I heard. Um, yeah, he, I mean Darude's sort of keen on working with the uh, with the singer and you know the, the three songs they chose were chosen for them and you know they picked those three songs that both fit uh his vocal ability and it it, it works but you know what <clears throat> it's very difficult to pull off that kind of song um in that kind of environment um dance songs work really good in the studio work really well in the studio don't always work well in a live environment. And that's my concern. It's not, I don't like the song. I like the song. Will it work live in Eurovision? I'm not convinced. Okay. So what do you, are you saying it will, you said it wouldn't qualify in your. I don't think it'll qualify. No, not in its current pre present state. And Finland is not, uh, Finland is kind of like a Switzerland, isn't it? It's not very highly regarded in, in um, doing well. Yeah, I mean they've sent some really good songs recently. Um, the the song uh, a few years ago with the duet that uh, the name escapes me um, was was excellent. I had that to to be the top five, and it didn't even qualify. In fact, it finished thirteenth, um, and uh, that was a real surprise. So Finland don't do that well. When they do qualify, they tend to do well, but they don't qualify that often at the moment. So I think this may this may they go the same way. Okay, cool. I am here with Lamb. Eurovision fan, a newbie fan, Asian person from Vietnam. <laughs> I always feel like when I call you an Asian, I feel like I'm calling you an alien or something. I'm like, <laughs> you're more than an Asian, but yeah. So um, I'm <laughs> more than an Asian. I'm way too Asian to be Asian. Man. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, I only say Asian because you bring good diversity to the the jury of um, yeah, cool. opinion and stuff like that. Um, so I am here with Lamb, and he's just going to react and review to Finland. Um, it's Darude. I don't know. Do you know that name, Darude, at all? Uh, no, this is the first time. Do you know a song called Sandstorm? Uh, maybe after this. <laughs> anyway, he he's an artist and uh, featuring Sebastian uh, Raymond, and it's Look Away. So, yeah, do your thing. Okay, one, two, three, go. Uh, 
Okay, interesting. I think it could be a good fit um, at um, EDM Music Festival. Very EDM, um, you know, good for young bloods. Um, um, I think the message was very clear, like straightforward. And the way he um, incorporated, you know, people from different backgrounds and different skin tones, um, it, I think it's uh, a very intentional approach of the team to, you know, um, draw attention and um, yeah, draw attention from you know the 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 global um, community. Like you know, it it um, targets a very sensitive, not not sensitive, but a very you know common topic. You know, like um, the damage that people have done to um, the earth. And it reminds me of the song "What I've Done" by Linkin Park. So it's uh, the same um, message and the same, even the melody is a little bit um, similar. Would you compare his voice, Sebastian's voice, to that of Linkin Park? Just a little bit, but uh, he didn't go way too high compared to uh, Linkin Park, what they've done, well, what they did in, in, in uh, what I've done. So I couldn't make a, a, um, a a good comparison between the vocal, but I think he has a very nice vocal, um, very emotional. I think his his singing actually conveys the message very well. And um, yeah, I think, but uh, how to say, it doesn't give a um, a um, a solution. That's what I think. I think it's that is it didn't go all the way to the top to the um, solution. It's just like don't look away. But then after after not looking away, then what? He didn't mention anything. And I think it's a little bit, um, it is a little bit more uh, to actually be um, complete. But I think at this stage, yeah, it's good. It's decent. That's a really interesting take because that has been a unanimous opinion throughout the jury. Yeah. Everyone's thought the same thing as you just said. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so it must be true. Um, yeah. Uh, do you think that the melody, you said the melody is good. Do you think it's hooky? You know, people will remember this song? Um, I'm not that sure that they might remember this song. I do mean, you think they'll remember Look Away. Just like, just like that, just that. That's the only thing. Because what I remember was the the EDM elements of the song rather than its actually its actual melody. So you know, I remember the, the the upbeat parts of it, but the actual melody, like the main melody, is, is not very um, memorable. So yeah, I mean, if, if you play that at a music festival, one hundred percent people will you know um, enjoy and and dance along with that. But if you know. If you try to put it on um, to um, Spotify, you know, you know, it, I don't think it's going to stay in people's mind for a very long time. Mm, okay. Yeah. All right, great. Um, thank you so much, Lamb, and thanks everyone for watching. You can see more of the jury's reactions. Just subscribe, do that thing. Until next time, bonsoir. Bye. Bye.